Warning, the following communications are not authorized. Please disable your signals and report to your local re-education center immediately. Failure to comply will result in immediate reprimand and capital punishment. They locked him out of the establishment. The billionaires! Yeah, the, yeah, trillionaires. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The trillionaires and the billionaires. Millionaires are okay, though. If you wrote a book, you could be successful like Bernie too. I wrote a book, that's how I can make money. It was not the I point one percent of the one percent. Yeah. These left-wing, crooked, corrupt politicians know exactly what they're doing. They are evil. It is the people who continue to follow these rules who are stupid. So I can now tell you that I was on quarantine, and I'll do a video about this later. The, here's the quarantine sheet that they give you at the border, and show that there. Wow. Episode two. We're back. It's been, I don't know how many days. Does it really matter? It's been a day. Let's just say that. <laughs> it's been one day since the last episode. <laughs> don't check We're the dates. Every single day. We're getting into the heat of the lockdowns all across the world, I guess. Gavin Newsom, the most popular governor, I think, in the world, just got caught uh, having his own like dinner party. Or I don't know. I guess he was just at one. Oh, his and, friend's 50th. Oh, and wasn't it medical professionals, too, he was with? Uh, that, that sort of came out later, right? And okay. that, that sort of came out a little bit later. But as, as he let him tell it, right, he was celebrating his friend's 50th birthday, and it was outdoors, and then it turns out it wasn't actually outdoors, and there was medical yeah. professionals. I saw the photo in there. Like, I just imagine the photographer in, like, a bush. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it had to have been. <laughs> yeah, he fades dude, back into it. Dude, these people, I mean, the projection is real. The hypocrisy knows no bounds. It's absolutely disgusting. It's really they don't. Disgusting. On all the people who have the harshest lockdowns, all the politicians, they're the ones who follow them the least. Lightfoot? Yeah. Right. I, oh, my God. She can't be a real person. Like, how do you even vote for a person? It sounds terrible, but how do you vote for a person who looks like they're evil? So I was talking Maybe to somebody in South Dakota actually today who didn't know too much about New York. And basically, and I'm like, I'm railing on de Blasio, who I actually don't dislike de, de Blasio quite as much as I despise Cuomo. But that's not mm -hmm. the point. And she asked a very simple question. How did he get elected? And I just don't have the answer for that. Cuomo freaking out on reporters today. Did you see that? I did. Dude, that was hilarious. I, look, I, I don't want I me. Mean, <laughs> I don't want to get us banned immediately. But man, Cuomo, this guy. I mean, he lights a fire. Like I, I, I'm speechless. I mean, the the gaslighting is so insane with this man. He's bl he will blame everybody. I mean, I'm sure you remember when he did his executive his nursing home executive order. And then when that backfired on him, he literally had the nerve to blame the nursing homes for following the executive. <laughs> so, well, you didn't have to. I don't know anyway. why anyone thought that was a good idea. They did that here at the beginning, too. And then they had – it got so out of control, they sent in the military here. Well, but uh, he also – he had the field hospitals. He had the Javits Center and the – uh, the Brooklyn Navy Yard Hospital. I mean, he had, I believe, three different field hospitals that he, oh, the ship, of course. How could I forget the, yeah. the ship? Um, so he had a handful of stuff and chose not to, which leads me to believe he really just wanted to drive up the numbers. You know, if I'm going to all be a conspiracy theorist, a far right conspiracy theorist, he wanted to drive up the numbers and gang control. He still tweets about it every day. He still obviously is uh, de Blasio shut down the schools and now they're threatening to shut down gyms and restaurants again, even though they're on a curfew because that's where he gains his power. And he knows if he just tells people you're going to die, but, but it, it's, it's wearing thin. Even the hardest left wing people are like, dude, what? It's, it's not even left and right anymore. It's just insanity and no, like, you know, normalcy. I, I don't know, but it's, it's very frustrating. Speaking of far right, and I can talk about this now, um, a news article came out about my cameraman 
who's actually he's got like three other jobs at the same time at the same company. But um, so I can now tell you that I was on quarantine, and I'll do a video about this later uh, <laughs> next week, I think, because I want to release like the tr- footage of the trip that I went on to the Trump rally. But um, here's the quarantine sheet that they give you at the border, and show that there. Wow. And it's the same thing. They just print off of the website. You can find it on the government website. And they don't give you any, they don't even actually tell you the date of when you're starting or when, like they don't give you any formal information. It's just this piece of paper. And then the, the following, I think a couple days later, they called me. I didn't answer. I didn't know who it was. Left a message and says, we'll call later today. You need to answer it. I answer it. And they're just like, ask me all these questions. Tell me that I have to be in my own room. Someone, I, do I have somebody to get groceries for me? I should have said no and, and seen what they were going to do. But I had enough food already. And that I have to use my own bathroom and everything. Basically, just luckily, I, I have a, my own room and bathroom. My own place. And they're just like, then a week later on the start of the next week, they send an automated message that says the second week is just as important as the first week to save the health of others or whatever. <laughs> so, wow. So the article that came out is we were trying to get the p- producer, the cameraman at, off quarantine because he has a lot of work to do that he can't do from home. He doesn't have like a vanilla sky. <laughs> well, I always yeah. mix up vanilla sky and the minority report. He doesn't have the minority <laughs> report com- computer in front of him. So they need <laughs> like they need him to go to work, but then they're just like, no, that's not important enough. But on the other hand, other journalists go back and forth all the time. And it turns out that 80% of people get in Canada get to skip quarantine that go across come across from the United States. 80% and it's been like 5.3 million instances of people who haven't had to quarantine. Not different people. Well, what's more important than work, though? Like, I mean, isn't that the one thing? Like, they, it's I'm not to be, It's supposed to be for people who have to travel for work. And, of course, he has to travel for work. Like, I don't want to put my foot, like, say anything I'm not supposed to. I'm pretty sure it's over, but... People from other networks get to go to Washington. I'm sure they come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, so this newspaper in Canada was mad that we ripped them. They were trying to stop us from being in a legislature, like being able to speak to politicians, essentially. So they're mad at us for kicking their ass on that. And then they <laughs> named him. But the worst, the funniest part about it is that they didn't even name me. I'm the person who's on the air all the time. And they didn't even do enough due diligence to look at the video from the trip we were on. Because the article says we were at the Trump rally or going there to cover the Trump rally in Michigan. They didn't even bother to see if we had footage of that. Because then they could have just, re- they would have had a better story. Is Andrew says <laughs> fucking quarantining? Is he supposed to? Well, you, you missed that one because I did and I did. <laughs> this, I- it's insane. I'm, I'm literally speechless, but I guess is so this is, I mean, is this it? This is our lives now. These are like, wh- where does this end? It just, this ne- is it our just- lives. Some media gets to travel the border. If it's deemed important by the government, Mo- uh, most people do not, but also apparently 80% of trips back don't have to quarantine. So they're not really doing anything. They say it's mostly truckers and medical technicians but I have no idea of knowing. They, you know, they only provide that statistics to the state media, to CBC, at their request. Yeah, I don't know too much about them, but I haven't heard great things. Well, they're just the BBC of Canada. Pay, you have to, like, they're paid by the government. They get a billion dollars this year. So it's kind of like our uh, NPR, like... It, yeah. It's... Okay. So they were supposed to get Olympics advertising money this year. Obviously didn't get it. So the government just gave them the money ahead in, instead. Are they going to give that money back when the Olympics happen? No, no way. They don't even have to. Also, if they make money, they don't even have to give it back to the government. So, and you look, okay. All right. yeah. is- and you look at the shows that they have and they're terrible. 
Like they've got like I make fun of it all the time, and it's not the people on the show obviously have a problem with you. If you're gonna get work, like actors, comedians, whatever, get your money, get work. But the sh- one show they have is an all female sketch comedy show. Ooh, edgy. <laughs> uh, a teen <laughs> show called <laughs> a teen show called Pen Fifteen. Cool, edgy <laughs> euphemism, you guys. Oh, that's hilarious. Yep. So this is kind of garbage that they get. They get all this money. And then all the mainstream media brands in Canada, uh, most of them, the biggest newspapers, who at least one of them would be out of business if they didn't get this. They get massive subsidies from the government where up to $50,000 of a person's salary can be subsidized by the government. So they just get these like huge grants, essentially, from the government every year. And I'm like, surely that doesn't make them be less hateful towards the people that pay for them. Yikes, bro. I mean... And that's Canada. I, <laughs> I haven't been in Canada since I was a tiny little kid, like, you know, tourist stuff like Niagara Falls uh, up from Detroit. So, but it sounds... I mean, ugh, not to be like a dick about it, but it kind of makes me feel like we're not doing quite so bad because we haven't no. got there yet. But it's coming for us. It's coming for us. I want to see what people think about... Oh, I guess I can ask you. (laughs) Like, how far do you think they'll take it with Biden? Do you think the progressives will realize he's not what they want? They already know. They already know. That's what I'm reading. Yeah. So, I saw it last we spoke. I actually... Saw a little bit of infighting, um, a little an- a little bit of anti-Biden graffiti, which I don't believe was scrawled on the wall by Trump supporters in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, so it's already happening. They already know. And I'm sure you see the clips. There's like, um, I don't know where it was, but it's like no presidents, like, which I guess is not that bad of an idea. Like, OK, maybe no presidents, but. These people obviously have no answer for what they want to do. Exactly. Right? What yeah. society are you going to emulate? Ancient Greece, where it's just like literally every vote counts. Yeah, they they have no idea what they want. They and and they won't they won't bother to they won't bother to figure out. They'll just destroy everything and then pretend. I mean, they, obviously they're like petulant little children, right? So they don't know. They're not they're not going to plan ahead even even one day. It's just let's we're mad right now. So let's smash this window. Let's burn this building. <laughs> now the rioting, the rioting has subsided a little bit. Perhaps that's because they think Biden won, um, but that is still to be decided, right? Like we, it, even you know when I'm this looking claim at some, is being disputed. This oh, clip God, it, has been disputed. Yeah. It is Wednesday. Mm, fact checkers mm. say that this is disputed. different time zones. <laughs> this is yeah. not correct. It's insane, but I don't know how far they're going to take it. I think um, I think Biden himself is in for a little bit of a reckoning. I mean, we've already seen some of the corruption, and I feel I almost feel bad for almost feel bad for the guy. I mean, where's his family? You know, like what's his wife and his? And, well, we know what Hunter's doing. Indeed, crack, basically. But what's He's his wife partying. doing? Sound like like yeah, Joe, like. No, lady, tell this man. I, I don't know, and and it's also very strange that you guys had twenty seven other options. I think, and it's if you count every single Democratic candidate that came and went, I believe it was twenty eight total. So they had a lot of chances to pick somebody else, and they didn't. So that to me, tell that that tells me that it's pure corruption, right? Like, who was the Eric something? Who's the blonde guy who's so bad? Oh, He's Swalwell. First... <laughs> yeah. 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 Eric Swalwell, the worst. He's yeah. so fake. He doesn't... I think when he goes on Tucker Carlson, they both know that he's not believing anything he's saying. And then he may or may not have farted on air. Right, right. I remember that. Yeah. Could have been a chair. It could have been the chair. I think he was saying it was like the coffee cup dragging against the table or something like that. Um, of course. But I mean, there was there's so many of them. We saw Marianne Williamson and Julian Castro and all these people who are absolutely awful. And they take a man. I mean, those people are all terrible. 
but they oh, could yeah. form complete sentences. They could make a sentence. Joe Biden can't even put together a full sentence. If you had to choose one of them of all the candidates or anyone who's a Democrat, who would you choose? Um, I'd have to go with Tulsi Gabbard. Ah, um, interesting. Yeah, I mean, and I think... She's not allowed, now, though. <laughs> she's not allowed, yeah. She's a, she's a Russian agent. She's a Russian bot. Um, if you come even anywhere in the realm of normalcy, they're not allowed. Like, I can't stand Andrew Yang's policies, but he's more normal and honest than the rest of them. But he's also not allowed. Yeah, they, they get shut out. So they hated Tulsi because she went on Fox News. Oh, my God. She tried to reach some other people that, don't, that aren't brainwashed by CNN, like burn her at the stake. It's basically what they what they did. Um, they're they're all good for nothing. Joe Biden and I mean, obviously Kamala Harris. I I can't stand her, and I think that's that's a huge part of this problem, right? Is because, like I said, she didn't even make it to the Iowa caucus, but the Democratic Party. She's 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 Black Hillary, right? Yes. Or, or maybe or Indian, East Hillary. Indian Hillary. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Indian Hillary. Don't, so and don't mispronounce her name. Is it? I, it's Kamala. I, it's Kamala. It's Kamal Camel A Harris, like she's selling cigarettes in the fifties or something. Okay, so it's not Camel Toe because I was calling her Camel Toe for a while. That um, is censored. That is officially that's, stricken okay, on right. YouTube. Okay, we're we're banned already. Ban, banned off YouTube. So um, you're saying there's a mask rule? I'm scratching my eye on air. It's probably not good. Um, <laughs> so there's a mask. <laughs> A mask uh, law, mask enforcement in your area now? Um, so, yes. this So, it, it actually, a couple weeks ago, they went for one and it got shot down. So, they tried again because just do what we say, you know. So, they tried again. And it, it's, it's all funny money. It's all political theater. I think these are people who think Joe Biden is going to be the president. So, they're posturing. Mm. That's just my personal opinion. Governor Noam is standing strong. She held a press conference today, like I said, but I didn't, I haven't watched it yet, so I can't comment on it too much. But um, some of my, some of my friends have told me that it, it actually made them feel pretty good that she's standing strong about the statewide nonsense. Um, but basically in this particular city, um, it's, it's an ordinance which is pretty much what they've already been doing. You see the sign sometimes, it says like, the CDC recommends you wear a mask, but it's not mandatory. It's just people, and they even say in the article, I actually have it pulled up right here, but they basically say, these are just politicians pretending to do something, right? So, and there's a litany uh, of, of exceptions. So I could just pick one. I'm gonna just be like, no, I, I got that one. You know, it sounds like you've reached R like three months ago to me. Oh, God. That kind of scares me because that means they could push it further. But um, but I'm not doing it. Like, I, I'm just, I'm not. Right? Like, in, you know, it is what it is. Like, I'll call the cops. You're going to, you're really going to call the cops on somebody? Like, what, I guess. Yes, it's, it appears people will. <laughs> I mean, so he, New York, by the way, just. A brief aside, they have a whole litany of problems. We're talking about, I just saw a clip of some guy who's not wearing a mask in an IHOP, and he physically attacks the IHOP worker for telling him to wear a mask. And, I mean, obviously the, the violent crime is through the roof. You got this guy on the top of a bus with a flamethrower and all sorts of Gotham City type stuff. And then the NYPD is posting to their social media, them literally handing out masks to people riding bikes in Williamsburg. So you guys are ignoring all of the real problems and passing out masks to somebody riding their, like that was the photo they chose to use was them giving a mask to a woman riding her bike by herself. And that was, it's so obvious to me that they are trying to distract you from the real problems. So they don't want to talk about the violent crime. They don't want to talk about the garbage. They don't want to talk about the homelessness and the drugs. They want to convince you that if you don't wear a mask, you're going to die. And it's absolutely disgusting. Now, I hope it doesn't get that bad here where I'm at now in Sioux Falls. Um, and I don't think it will. Because even with this ordinance, 
And this is one thing that I brought up a long time ago in New York is that I would be able to, to swallow this pill a little bit easier if it came with an expiration date. And they, no, New York would never do that. No, New York would never do that. They'll say, until it's safe. That's which the means, thing. That nobody has an end date for anything. But this one does, even though it's not even a real mandate. <laughs> so that's what happened here. And I'll give you a brief rundown of how that works. So everybody's okay with the mask. Okay, it's just masks now. And there's all these exemptions. But now it's gotten to the point where some businesses and Costco and Good Life Fitness have both come out with policies now where they don't allow any exceptions, even though in every single bylaw, there's clear exceptions. Some of them are where I live. It's as simple as if it prohibits your breathing in any way, because it's obviously it's not safe. But Costco and, and Good Life, they're saying because they have members, or it's a membership club, that they can just refuse you for that. And there's now just videos popping up everywhere of people just going into Costco and just being like, I have an exemption. And they're like, no, sorry. And the thing is, you can't just make rules that go against people's humans right, human rights. So that's, not, that's why it's not like a real law, like you're saying. And the Constitution in the United States is even stronger about like personal freedom. So they can make these city ordinances and regional mandates and everything. But as Are they like so following much- people around? I mean, like... You, you, you wear it to, to get in, let's say like a Costco, right? They just stand at the door and say, you need to put on a mask. So then, so then when you're in, I mean, the jig's up, right? Like if you're in there, I'm not going to walk around a Costco with a mask on and, and shop. I mean, you, you pull it down. I mean, is somebody going to tap you on the shoulder as you're shopping? And tell I you mean, to pull they'll, it back up? They'll, they'll tell you to pull it up. I know when I was going to um, my gym, they had their people were walking around. It was never like that before. They just have their people walking around trying to like, hey, uh, put on your mask. They never did it. I think they're just supposed to do, walk around and do that. But I was on quarantine. While you're actually so- working out. While you're actually or no, between machines. Ne- uh, you weren't supposed, it was supposed to be between machines. But now what I'm reading is that it's at all times. Even though that's clearly a health hazard, I won't be able that to breathe. I know dude. that. I know I won't be able to do that. I'm not wondering if that's only in red zones, but I haven't been able to go to the gym because I'm I'm wasn't allowed to legally leave my ah. home. <laughs> ah. That's the ex- that's the excuse I'm using for the last two weeks. Before that, the last three months, because they have this thing where you have to schedule it online, and it's so stupid. This is not congruent to my. This is not what I signed up for to pay for. First of all. But either I have to like stay an hour late at work or go home and wait another hour. I don't want to do that. And then they were just starting to open it up with like open times where they would just have a four hour window where you could just go in like normal. So do you check right now? Do you see it? I mean, do you, in your opinion, I mean, do you see it ever ending or like, I mean, how does it already at like seven months? (laughs) So already, yeah. What's the end goal, though? Like, because they're going to keep telling, at least here, what, what seems to be happening is they're going to keep telling you, oh, testing is so important. Testing is so important. And obviously, as more people get tested, there will be more cases. And that's the key word now is they just say, oh, cases. There's an uptick in cases. There's a spike in cases, an uptick, an uptick. But that, to me, is almost a good thing because as more people test positive, but the death numbers and the hospitalizations do not go up. It only proves more and more that it's not quite as deadly as they wanted it to be in the beginning. See, the thing is here, they're testing like 30,000 people a day. There's only 10 million people in this province. They're going to run out. I don't understand what their plan is here. (laughs) And how are they getting, like, how are they still getting this many tests? Where are they coming from? See, what they actually do is, is they'll test a person who's positive multiple times and, and count that as cases. There's so much fish, fishy stuff. And like and the, the rapper I was talking to recently from Chicago, he said that he went and got a test and he ca- I don't remember the name of the clinic, but he called it the clinic by name. And they said that even though he tested negative, they're counting him as a case. Why? Just, I mean, it's just a pure, it's a pure power grab. It's like a socialism thing. Like what? What is the actual end goal and when does, I mean, so we're looking at, because guys like Dr. Fauci say like, well, you're going to need to, 
Because now, obviously, what Fauci's saying is that even when the vaccine comes out, you're still going to have to wear a mask and social distancing yeah. or social distance, which calls it all into question. I mean, how are people still buying this? I don't know. And I'm looking at the gym website right now and it changed. You no longer book a time. So I don't know what it means. It just has a list of classes. I'm not, I don't want to take any classes. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> Let's get a free workout. Let's see that. Uh, that's just for a membership. This is, so I, this don't is I don't know what this means. Co-ed club. Doesn't say any open. They might be back to normal hours. Oh my god! Oh wow! Are we learning something right now? Maybe there yeah, is a light at the end of the tunnel. It just says six a.m. to ten p.m. What I think is what's going on now is that I'll stop looking at the computer screen now. Uh, what I think <laughs> is going on now is that only in red zones are they actually um, forcing people, unless they've decided. That mandatory masks, I should pull that back up, actually. Unless they've decided that with mandatory masks at all times, that it's okay somehow. So let me, okay, so let me ask you this, as far as the mask is concerned, right? Now, the... I, I'm going to have to call I, them. <laughs> I, I think, okay, I think the mask is obviously a, a mind control power grab thing. But my question is... Why is this so serious with the mask? Because if you say, say, for the sake of argument, if I had a positive COVID test result right here in my hand, would people still be willing to let me go places and hang out and do things if I wore a mask, right? It's like, if you, to put it crassly, if you knew somebody had an STD, would you still lay down in bed with them if you said, okay, well, I'll use a condom. You know, it's like, you know that this person is infected. So would you still go go along with that because they're using this protective measure? Because I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is the masks basically seem useless because you're already telling people, stay home if you're sick, social distance, all this and that. So why do I have to wear a mask? I am not sick. And if I were sick, you still wouldn't want to be around me even if I were wearing the mask. Well, they came. They they thought of some of their answers of what they should say when people have those questions, and they're pretty crappy answers. Like it protects the person, it protects everybody, not the person. It protects you from spitting on everybody else, essentially. But that's um, but that still feeds right into my question, right? Because I if 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 I were positive and I'm wearing a mask, then you should be fine with it because you're going to force me to wear a mask anyways. They know the masks don't really do anything though. Like it can't like it can stop you from literally like, like if I have, let's say like poisonous spit <laughs> and I actually spit on you, it's going to, it's going to burn your skin. Like it's a Starcraft character or something. <laughs> Shout out Starcraft two brood wars, everybody. <laughs> um <laughs> But um, it would, it's still airborne is, is the thing. So in le- they're, they're treating it as if it's an acid spit that if you don't get it, at least you're not spitting on people directly, and which makes it a much higher chance if you're spitting in somebody's eyes or mouth um, that they won't get it. But if, it were, if we're blocking it, at least we're preventing any of that spit infections. But obviously it's not like... The microns are smaller. These aren't medical masks. A cloth, cloth is not meant to prevent airborne viruses. And if it was that dangerous, as they say it is, we'd have to wear hazmat suits. There, you'd have to have something covering your eyes, ears, and mouth. You'd have to sanitize your whole body because it could get in through your pores. But it's just not that deadly. Like, how are we? We've gotten past the point where 99.9 9, or maybe 99.3 or something survival rate is not good enough where we have to do all this. Like there's only like some places are worse, but I think you can quantify that with mistakes that have been made like New York, like New Jersey and somewhere else that I'm forgetting. So how many, what percentage of public buses make it to their destination? You know, is it a hundred or does a bus get in an accident, you know, once a month and then that brings it down to 99.7%. You know what I mean? Like, are you going to stop driving a car? I guess some people would. These people are morons. Well, that's the the risk. Like you have to allow people to have to 
have their own risk assessment for something like this. I guess the argument would be that you're endangering other people, but you're doing that in a car also. Exactly. You're doing that if you're swinging a baseball bat, the ball exactly. could hit somebody in the crowd. Yeah. I mean, you they could just, go to a golf tournament and get hit in the head with a golf ball. If we're still alleging that this is just them trying to keep us safe, then they you'd have to argue that they're just trying to prevent a mass outbreak. But that already happened. That already happened all over the world. And they think, what, it's just going to happen again? Like, the, the infection and, rate just isn't there. And uh, I'm sure you've seen, I mean, there's a million memes floating around, but either way you slice it, it does not make sense to lock down again. Because if the lockdown worked the first time, why would you have to do it again? And if the lockdown did not work the first time, why would you do it again? Um, and I'm just going to keep playing devil's advocate, even though I don't agree with these points, but this is just what people I've heard is, well, it's because people aren't following the rules properly. And then they say, well, look at Asia. First of all, I don't trust Asia's numbers. I don't China flatlined. I don't trust uh, Taiwan and Japan to, to just be like completely. I don't think any country is just going to be like, yeah, we suck. We can't keep it under control. And also these are, the countries that are very within the last 50 years had just terrible governments. Maybe Japan's longer. Maybe you can say 80, almost 80 years for them. But it's passive societies that allow this to happen. It'd be like saying, like, let's follow the Serbian model. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> the Yugoslavian know, model. So why are we doing it? It's just, it's a, I mean, is this really about this great reset? Like uh, this one world government, like, you know, like, no more capitalism. You don't own anything. Like, obviously, Cuomo and Newsom want nothing more than to eliminate private businesses. They, they literally, I mean, they see what's happening. Do you, do you think these, you know, 60-year-old men don't understand what they're doing? Like, oh, yeah, it's all for your health. They know this. It's not, and like, like I always said, I'm sure I'm not the only person to say this, but these left-wing, crooked, corrupt politicians know exactly what they're doing. They are evil. It is the people who continue to follow these rules who are stupid. So a lot of people are like, oh, Cuomo's a dumbass or Newsom's an idiot, which is true. I think they are, you know, stu I, I, I don't like them. I don't care for them. But I think what they're doing is far beyond stupidity and well into the realm of evil, right? They know what this manipulation is. I mean, I'm not following Newsom quite as closely, but he is in the news more you know, in the last day or two, but going on Twitter every single day and telling people exactly how many cases there are and exactly how many, which a, obviously I don't trust Andrew Cuomo as far as I can throw him. He's a liar. He's lied through his teeth. We, we all know that. Like he did the whole nursing home thing. So when he says 800,000 cases and 2,400 positive, and that's one plus it's like, dude, and, and he's, ta he's literally counting the deaths every day on Twitter. There was 13 COVID fatalities today. They do that two, today or here as well. And so, A, I guess the first thing is I don't trust them. I don't trust their numbers. I just genuinely don't believe them. But, B, it is so obvious to me that it's just a power grab. They uh, – because if, if he didn't do it, what would he do? What would Andrew Cuomo be doing if he didn't say that every day? He would have nothing to do. He would be useless. You know, it's hard to, like, I don't want to attribute malice to people. I don't think that's a good argument to have. But again, just like the media, it gets to the point where it's like you either you just don't know what you're talking about or you're not good at your job because it's hard. Like, how can, like, the build back better thing, which is part of the global reset thing. Sounded like a conspiracy six months ago. Now it's just true. The COVID pass thing sounded like a conspiracy six months ago. Ticketmaster was trying it. English Airways wanted to do it. And then Justin Trudeau, Boris Johnson, the UN, uh, Joe Biden, they're all using the phrase build back better, which you can directly trace to a UN plan called building back better. And then they then Trudeau uses the words "build back better," "global reset," in the same like clip of a minute, <laughs> and people are just supposed to be like, "Oh no, that's a conspiracy." And then I believe 
I couldn't believe that the image that says you will owe nothing and you will love it was a real image. It's blows my mind. Why wouldn't you want it? You'll just be car sharing everywhere you'll go. You'll just pick up a new car. I mean, I could see how somebody would think that's like futuristic and progressive. But at the other hand, that just means that everybody uh, everybody else owns shit and you don't. And I the the thing that I see in elitism already, I, funny enough, I was watching a Steve O video yesterday. And he was going to some, I don't know if it was a hotel or not, but they have like the guy in there, the the butler, he's wearing a mask and he's taking him to a really cool place. And I'm just pi- picturing like the only things where, pe- where, where people can go now are where rich or special people can go and just experience something really cool by themselves. Is that what everything's going to be? Or is dining inside of a restaurant going to be for special people only? And I wouldn't have to think about these sort of things if all the other conspiracies haven't come true. If there's a yeah. no jab, no fly or whatever, like they wanted to do in Australia, if that starts coming true, then I'm going like, mark my words, people. There's nothing that I won't read into and think that it's the most evil thing ever. Because again, we're talking about something with 99%. More than 99. And two... Like two or three people under 20 in my entire country have died. That's it. And like the vast majority of deaths are in, first of all, in long-term care homes. The last time they studied that, it was 82% of COVID deaths were in long-term care homes. Yeah, And then it's all people over like 60. So Yeah. And not to be, you know, ever, you know, not to be rude, but like, that's where you go when you're nearing the end. That's what's going to happen. And there's, who are we talking to anymore? I, I just – so to me, it seems like they're not proving their point by tracking cases. Oh, oh, there's an uptick in cases, a spike in cases. That to me almost seems like you're proving my point because more people are getting this. You you really – now, I know this triggers a lot of people, but you pretty much just rebranded the flu. And you sold it back to people and told them they were going to die. So when everybody gets sick but the deaths remain consistent – you're only proving the point that it's not that bad, in my opinion. They, they but they moved the, the goalposts. Goal yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get out of my head. Brain force <laughs> available <laughs> online. <laughs> Infowarsstore.com. <laughs> oh, but by the way, I did see uh, one of my friends was out in Atlanta today. Um, Alex was out there with the tank and uh, nice. the Georgia Atlanta, Senate man. race is, um, is going to be a right, real big right. Um but outside of that, I guess a, a little bit about the, the the million MAGA march or the Stop the Steal rally, which was absolutely amazing. Um, I don't even I couldn't even venture a guess as to how many people were there. I mean, just everywhere you turn, just when you thought it was kind of like thinning out and there wasn't any more people, you'd like bend the corner and there'd be like a, just a huge crowd of people. I mean, it was everywhere from the freedom plaza all the way up to scotus and just like every every little nook and cranny there was there was people um in the left i'm sure you saw they got they were i i was lucky maybe i was in the right place at the right time because all day i mean i got there i will admit i I may have had one too many tequila drinks on friday but um i got there maybe around 10 30 um no, no, maybe like 11, because it started at noon, and we still got there a little bit early. So maybe like 11. There's people everywhere, um, but it was just – everywhere you look, it was all just good vibes. I mean, you know, red hats and USA flags and just everything. There was no no sign of the left, but obviously you see like the sucker punches and, all, and like the weird daytime violence that was few and far between. But when night fell – it definitely got a little hectic. Um, and then that's when you got, you got guys like uh, Posobiec tweeting, you know, if you're in D.C., go to your hotel or, you know, don't travel in groups of less than five. The, the left is out there just committing random, act of viol- random acts of violence. Um, and, of course, we walked, you know, maybe a, a little bit more than a half hour, like 35 minutes from – from Harry's, you know, the infamous, like, kind of Trump bar. It's not a Trump bar, but it's, like, you know, right, uh, directly across from the Trump Hotel. And, you okay. know, it's kind of like a Trump supporter bar. So 
the left showed up. We're literally like eating burger, like, you know, eating burgers and it's basically a huge party in there when we all get word that, that the left is coming down the block. And as you, I don't know if you saw my gang feed, wars, you could see, cause I was going to, I was going to leave it alone. I was actually, it was like gang wars, but I was going to leave it alone. I was like, dude, it was such a good vibe. I don't want to deal with the left. I want to eat this burger, go back to the Airbnb, look at these photos and like hang out, you know, watch YouTube or whatever. But when I started seeing these huge mobs of people running one way, it was almost like something out of a cartoon, like huge mobs of people would run one way and, and I'm eating my burger. I'm like, I'm not dealing with it. And then they would go back the other way. I'm like, I'm not dealing with it. And then another block, they went down the other block. And I'm like, all right, let me just go see what this is all about. And sure enough, it was, it was the Patriots or, you know, the Proud Boys, whatever, like um, chasing Antifa or the left or the BLMs or whatever out of the scene because they were huge they were outnumbered by i mean there might have been like five or ten of them from what i could see so they were hugely outnumbered but they're doing their thing swinging their skateboards and all all sorts of weird stuff like that but it's just so funny to me how as soon as night falls because it wasn't dark you know we're just in this in this time this whatever standard time so it gets dark at four o'clock five o'clock so by the time it was six thirty. They were out causing commotion, and it's just like, and I guess the point is, and they they don't even like Biden. Even you could hear him. I I saw some conversations from the night before the rally, so Friday, when we're talking to people at BLM Plaza, and I think some Trump supporters assumed that they they voted for Biden. They're like, why do you like Biden? And they're like, you know, fuck Biden. Like, we don't like Biden, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, so you're just so you're gonna call you're gonna ride and burn things and be violent no matter what. So what do you <laughs> yeah. mean? I I just it's not I, communist not enough for them. It's not communist enough for them, even though. So I guess, but if they even if they were remotely smart, they would still realize that Biden is gonna is gonna be the closest thing you got, right? Like, because Bernie, because they hate the Democrats, because. They locked Bernie out, you know, the real commie or whatever, socialist, whatever. But they locked him out of the establishment. The billionaires. Yeah. The, yeah, the trillionaires. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The trillionaires and the billionaires. Millionaires are okay, though. If you wrote a book, you could be successful <laughs> like Bernie, too. I wrote a book. That's how I made money. It was it's not. The point I one percent of the one yeah. percent. Yeah. Dude, that guy. I, I, a lot of people still like him. I, I never liked his policies. I just don't, I, I don't like no. that, me personally. But now I can't. S- hmm? Go ahead. No, now I, I don't like him because he's capitulated to the, to the establishment twice. They locked him That's out. They all do. Yeah, it's crazy. Cory Booker was so progressive until he lost. And he's like, oh, Joe Biden, you guys, he's sweet. Yeah, it, it, exactly. And Cory Booker, bathroom Booker, as I like to call him. Have but. you seen the movie The Warriors? Um, I haven't. I, I think I'm, I mean, I know, like, I guess the famous scene where he's yeah, like, Warriors about, come out and play, yeah, but I, I have not seen it though. But I that's, was just thinking that's what it's like out there. You got your proud boys, you got your patriot prayer, Antifa, Black Block. So I was just looking up a bunch of the names of the gangs. <laughs> you got the Baseball that, Furies, is the one that I remembered most. <laughs> The Hurricanes, That's the Lizzie's, probably, which was chicks. Yeah. Oh, there's, oh, there's <sighs> chicks. I didn't even know that. That's from the, the movie. The hi-hats. They need to remake this movie. And then they could have like a like famous people ahead of each gang. So, I, I, think I can't. Oh, by the way. Uh, I wanted to go to Atlanta. I don't think I'm going to make it. It might not. It's not in the budget, but there's supposed to be a big <laughs> rally down there. Ah. Uh, on Saturday. Yeah, you mentioned, you mentioned Infowars. Uh, former Infowars, I believe she was Savannah Hernandez. Shout out oh, Savannah. Did she work for them? I'm pretty sure either that or she was just dating Owen Troyer because they were together. I'm pretty sure they used that like Action Seven News thing she did just so they could get footage for Infowars, or she did for herself and like sold it to them. Either way, she was with them a lot, but she got banned from Twitter and she had like a quarter million followers. I think she's pretty cool. Um, she works for Slightly Offensive now as the producer. Everybody yeah. lives in Texas now. 
You should have moved there. I, I, you know, obviously it crossed my mind. Florida crossed my mind, but it, it's just it, it's just more affordable here. It really mm. is. It's more affordable. You the and, casinos. And I got um, I got some some intel about Florida that they were still being crazy about the mask, and I just didn't like that. Right? Like, um, I'm like, dude, I, I, like, you went to Florida to be. To be in a central, to, well, to be to be in a central location to cover the election and be able to kind of like, I mean, Texas is basically right in the middle, right? So you could you could get to D.C., you could get to Nevada, you could get to Florida, you could get to Georgia, all in like a pretty, you know, pretty. If you're headquartered there, in, you know, a two or three hour flight in any direction, and and also have it be pretty cheap and live in like a a, a, a six week Airbnb or something. But to hear that they were going crazy about the mask was a complete turnoff because I, I, I did think about going there. But then I, I start looking at um, just the job market uh, in South Dakota, along with the affordability. Um, it, it was it just you, you can't beat it. You just can't beat it. And that's why you, it, I, I promise you it's not showing now, but I'm going to do my <laughs> research. And if you have any tips for me, if you have any suggestions. I am going to build out a nice little studio um, and we'll work on this. I got a couple other projects I'm working on and. Um, oh no, you're not allowed to have projects. Yeah. So this can be the only one. <laughs> only I may have. Um, He's all in Texas. Infowars. Slightly offensive. Steven Crowder. Mm-hmm. Yep. I feel like there's another one. Well, Daily Wire. Just Joe Rogan to- now. Yep. Daily Wire moved there? Yeah, they moved. No, no they, they went, went to- to- yeah, Tennessee, which also did cross my mind as well. I don't. How are how do Michael Knowles and Ben Shapiro like? How do they fit in in Nashville? Yeah, I don't know. Let's just get some cowboy boots and. and did they it. actually move, or did they just um, send their headquarters there for so lower taxes? I'm pretty, oh, I'm pretty sure. Now Ben and and those guys, I'm pretty sure they're doing well enough to maybe kind of live a double life. Um but I doubt that they want to pay the California state taxes. And I was actually listening to, uh, to Knowles <laughs> on my way to Wisconsin when my car broke down. And he did say that he was actually about to pick, like he was, he was on his way to he, and, cause I thought the same thing. It was like, is Knowles really going to go to, I don't know about uh, what's the other guy, uh, Clavin. Andrew and, Clavin. Yeah. Yeah, and Walsh. I don't know what they did, but I did hear on one of um, one of um, Michael Knowles' episodes that he was actually going in Asheville. So I'm trying to see if Ben Shapiro got a new set. I know what they did this thing where they have them all on all their own podcasts on their own channels now, which is smart. They're big enough for that. So maybe I'm going to the wrong channel here. Yeah, why did what, what, what that was just to like um Well it makes it so they the have a bunch of channels. It looks like the Daily Wire channel is now just all clips. Everything under five minutes, yeah. And then if I look at um, Michael Knowles, he's got 353,000 subscribers now, whereas he only used to have like 50. So they did, okay. I wonder how many Matt Walsh is. Not a match. 129,000. That angers me. Ever since his, he started off with them by doing videos in, from his car. And I was like, you've got such a big production team behind you that you're doing it from your car. And I don't know. Uh, he's a, he's a non-entertaining. Andrew says is my opinion on him. <laughs> <laughs> I can do videos from my car. I have a beard. <laughs> he, see, he has tattoos though. Does he? He doesn't seem like the type of guy. I think he's got like a big. I mean, I have you know, I have a couple, you know. Um, yeah, because you're a gang member. <laughs> that's racist. Um, racist. I, I mean, I, I, Walsh is alright. I, I like Walsh. He's, he's all right. I'm. I, I feel oh, like he his, does. His, his episodes are also. I feel like a little bit shorter than the rest of the guys. They only like they kind of clock out like 30, 35 minutes where everybody else is doing around 45 to an hour maybe i've misjudged him he's all right i i I honestly i'll be like i didn't really care for him because he was actually pretty anti-trump at the beginning 
He was kind of like a never Trumper, you know. We all come around. I wasn't on the Trump train at the beginning either, but um, now with with Joe Biden being the, it, it's just it's so obvious with this corruption. I mean, it's so obvious who's really buying that. We've already been through this, but it's like re- really, guys. Like we we know you stole it from Bernie. We know you guys are. We're crying about Stacey Abrams. You had that guy, um, the little meth head guy out in Florida who lost to uh, DeSantis. I mean, these people are mm-hmm. so crooked and corrupt. Like, r- really, like... And talk ooh. about Trump not accepting his election. Stacey Abrams never accepted it. Hillary no, Clinton I mean, still hasn't accepted it. Hillary, okay, Hillary Clinton, I guess technically she conceded, but she, for, she, she went on her, you know, like... Um, just tirade for years about obviously Russia and, you know, decency and we cannot be civil. I mean, between Mad Maxine Waters, Hillary Clinton and and, and the squad, they are all, as far as I'm concerned, they are all responsible for the riots that we've been oh, dealing with. They've been saying basically it's okay because the other, because Trump supporters are trash for years. Maxine yes. Waters is like a cartoon character yeah she's like a uh, one of <laughs> this is so mean uh but like the droopy cheeked dogs oh i was gonna say like she looks like a california raisin i don't know if you remember them like the old yeah i like, do they were sweet they sang and stuff <laughs> yeah when you true. see them in this in a restaurant or the rest i don't know what else she said other than a restaurant <laughs> She said a, a gas station. station. You don't no, miss them. Said blah, blah, blah. Gasoline station, which I thought mm. made it that much like. Because she's mean, from woman, 1838. Exactly. Like, how old is this woman? And then you're on a petroleum I- stand, getting your tires <laughs> oscillated for the first time. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget to vote for Andrew Jackson. Yeah. And now they want to talk about unity. Like, come on, guys. Really? Like, you really think we're buying that? And obviously, we had. You know, Kaylee McEnany tweeted that it was a million Trump supporters or, or a million plus, whatever it was. But obviously, however angry that all these Trump supporters are and nothing, the, the entire city of D.C. was not boarded up because they are afraid of angry Trump supporters. That is a fact. I mean, who's going to deny that? Who could possibly deny that? Could you look Kamala Harris right in the face and say, why are these buildings in, in major cities across the country boarded up? What would she say? Racism? <laughs> exa- no, exa- exactly. She would say, well, I mean, you know what she would probably do? <laughs> she would do her little cackle and be like, her it was not that person bad. Laugh? She's, she's awful. I can't stand that woman. And we cannot have them. We can't do it. I mean, I've already come out to South Dakota as a way to, even if for some reason, if for some reason, Joe Biden doesn't manage to pull this off with all this fraud and deception, this is still, as far as I'm concerned, in my little bit of research, South Dakota is still the best chance for some sort of freedom, win or lose. I mean, where else am I going to go? What? what, what all these weird weirdo lefties, these hard these hard left commie socialist people or whatever, where would they rather be? And that's an honest question. I know it sounds like kind of cliche, but think about it. You know, fire up your DuckDuckGo, fire up your Google, do a little bit of research and tell me where you would rather be. Well, there's not many places left. I've thought about it. And where like- is it? I don't. I think it's too hot in Florida. Tennessee is probably a little bit weird. Uh, and then gun rights. Because if I'm going to move, I want guns. Texas. Oh, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'll keep. I'll keep it off screen. But you can't first. put that on YouTube. Yeah. No, I don't even know. I'm pretty sure you're allowed to. I don't know. I learned the rules about this. There was a YouTube rep that told us. You're allowed to talk with them. I don't think you're allowed to. You no people fire guns. I'm not sure. Maybe you can't show how to build them or something. Maybe you can't point it at the screen. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure there's some stupid stipulation. Guns for kids. It was actually one of the first things I did when I got here because just by sheer coincidence, I obviously did not plan this. Um, you one of the first weekends I was here, there was a big gun show. Um, 
at, at one of these convention centers. It w wasn't even a 10 minute drive from my place. And I just went, it was $3. Imagine that. Imagine where anything costs $3. I had to break a $5 <laughs> bill to get in. Yeah. <laughs> so you get it's in when three. Maxine Waters was a kid. Exactly. You're like back in my day, I, I got well, penny candies or something. Um, and you just, you walk around the whole place, all these, now, if I was thinking at that time, though, uh, the budget was a little bit tighter because I wasn't sure exactly how the work situation was going to be working out. And, you know, there's a bunch of things. So I couldn't just like go in there and start splurging on guns. Um, but if I was thinking, if I were if I were a smarter man, I would have I would have bought more ammo because that's much harder to come by now. The ammo is what's getting people. And they, you got these old guys in there. They got these boxes of ammo there and it's all, and everybody was super nice. I was just chatting it up with people. I was like, uh, yeah, I, I told someone, I was like, yeah, well, I'm originally from California, but I lived in New York and they're like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Welcome. Like, <laughs> you know, they were super nice about it. They weren't like, go back to your hellhole, commie. They were like, welcome to a free state, buddy. You know, so I, I enjoy the casinos so there. Yeah, they're everywhere. They're, they're I everywhere. I assume so in a place called Sioux Falls. And everywhere there's go. native reserves. <laughs> and you're banned <laughs> um i have enough native friends where i can make these jokes there's actually more in um now maybe i don't know i haven't been here that long but it, it felt like i saw more uh, on the western portion of the state closer to rushmore um where you would go into yeah a, a gas station that would have you would have a gas station with a a pub so imagine that, a gas station with a bar that doesn't sound like it should be right, but here we are. And then in the back, there was a casino, and then you could buy, you could buy hunting gear, not guns, but you could buy other like hunting gear, camo gear, orange vests, um, buck knives, and all sorts of stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm not really a gambling man. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I like to get more on the golf course, but that's an, that's an entirely different conversation. To, that's to a have. different episode. Yeah, that's a different episode. Trump golf episode. Yeah, I would love to get to a Trump uh, Trump resort or something, right. country club, something like that. Um, you got Florida and Scotland. I don't know where else they are. There's one in Jersey or... It's, e it's either in New Jersey or it's in New York. I, I think it's actually in Jersey, right across the bridge. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. Because there was a big rally up there. Uh, the New Yorkers went up there and they... They started at the golf course and like went down through went down through New York because I mean you know Jersey is obviously just you, you could throw a rock in New Jersey from the Bronx. Mm, um, I know this from Grand Theft Auto. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what, what do they call it? Grand Theft. It's like back in oh they had San Andreas instead of instead of Los Angeles or whatever. I don't even know what they call well, it. Liberty City is New York, Liberty. and like the industrial area across the bridge is essentially Jersey. What do they call it? Don't remember. You're gonna make me look this up. <laughs> I do remember Liberty City, though. Now that you bring it up, um, and I, I wish, I hope, I, I guess. Last thing here, I don't know if we have to wrap up how long we've gone for, but um, what what do you see happening? As obviously you're in Canada, so it's not quite as big of a deal, but like as far as the Supreme court judgment and these, these states that are in question, what do you think is going to happen? I still don't know. Like they're like, they're still fighting the stuff in, in Georgia. They're still finding more votes. They're getting the recount in Wisconsin. I can't find the name of it. Uh, they don't have an actual, the, the overarching name on this map, <laughs> but, um, Across the bridge it's, from Liberty City. Yeah, it's D on it's on Deviant Art too. I didn't know that website still existed. But anyways, oh, I think I think uh, the thing that would cause them to win would be discounting a bunch of votes where they weren't allowed to watch them be counted or verified. I think that's would probably what would make them win Pennsylvania and maybe um, Michigan. But again, I have no idea. It's hard to tell. Yes, they're finding stuff, but it's not enough votes. We just have to wait for the Georgia and the Wisconsin recounts, I guess. I think I think they're just I think they're just tying it up. I think they're just buying time to be honest. I mean, I believe that there's one hundred percent fraud or 
you know, I, I kind of get, I watched Tim Pool obviously, and um, and he's saying, it's not fraud. And he keeps saying impropriety. I'm like, Tim, in, okay, call it impropriety, fraud. Like, it's just, you, you it, it's there, whatever. Call it whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, but I think buying time to make sure that, enough, so these states don't certify, certain states don't certify, that will get him to the, whatever it is, the 14th or whatever of December. And then, However, that happens, it could possibly end up in the Supreme Court. I, I'm not, I don't know, yeah. the process, but do not concede. That's where I'm standing with this. Um, you know, I, I, I do have to take the red hat off every now and then. I don't want to go too hard, but I, I will. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not willing to let, to let, uh, as I like to call him, Bo Jiden, uh win this thing, you know. The guy, he, do, he doesn't deserve it. And that's, that's uh, on this last note, that is clearly why he did not campaign. Because he knew it wasn't going to matter. Kamala Harris still hasn't conceded her seat. We leave it at that. Big question that's mark. Big qu- The end question mark. <laughs> yeah, that's a to be continued. Same bat time. All right. Let's say goodbye. And that's when the montage starts. All right. See you next time, boys and girls.